with me, Lee. We are once again back at the Coombe Valley Campers workshop, so do excuse me if it's a bit echoey. Why are we here? Well, a couple of weeks ago I moved and we're having a real battle with the uh, internet providers. I could go into it, but the internet's not good enough at home at the moment to upload videos, do the editing on the videos, or even go live. So I'm here now, I'm here to answer your questions, I'm here to answer your comments, and hopefully we're gonna be swapping those mirrors right there with these wonderful truck mirrors from Jed at Campervan Culture, and hopefully we can do it live. I have got a selection of tools, and I've got it all prepared out here in front of me, I think. So let's hope that we can actually go ahead and fit a set of mirrors live, because once again, we can't provide you with a how-to video this week. My man Ali is still away. There has been some delays, so I thought, why don't we do live, but with a bit of a twist, let's uh, do a job. Let's do some fitting, or at least a job whilst we're here. So. If anybody's there in the comments, I can see that there's 10 people watching right now. So good evening to you. Uh, yes, let's hope we can do this today. Uh, normally we start off, if this is your first time here, normally we start off with uh, who you are, whereabouts you're from, what van you've got, and have you been working on it this week? Have you been away? Are you away at the moment? Um, are you going away in the next couple of weeks? We are going away in this guy. Um, on Friday, uh, we are going down to Nuki for the first ever Run to the Sun in 10 years, I think. And what's funny about that is I, I was going through some photos. Like I said, we've moved recently and we're still like putting boxes in the loft or organizing some stuff and all sorts of things. And I found my old box of photos and I, I should have brought them with me here because um, I found the photos of the first ever Run to the Sun I went to in 2004, I believe it was, 2004, um, this time 19 years ago, I went down to Run to the Sun in Nuki in my Beetle. It was my 1967 Beetle called Jimbo. I went down with my brother and it was one of the most amazing times. Um, like five or six years later, I then took my wife down there for the first time in 2009. Uh, and then again in 2010, and we've just missed it ever since. So we're getting this guy ready. We're going down with some friends. It's going to be an awesome weekend. So first of all, we've got Stu MCP in the chat. He says, good evening, Lee. And like I say, there's 15 of you in the chat. You're being quite quiet tonight. So let's get some of you in, some of you here, and let's get straight on with um, fitting those mirrors. Now, first of all, if I take a step back, can you notice anything different with Bully if you haven't been watching our stories on social media? It's not the best angle to see the comparison, but yeah, we have raised the suspension on Bully. We've put some lifted, uh, lifting spaces. So we've gone back to stock springs. So back to stock springs with um, some spacers and I've kept the tires, but, sorry, I've kept the wheels, but I've put some 225, 75, 16s on. So it's a big, big deal. I have been wanting to lift this thing forever. And so yeah, now we're absolutely lifted. Uh, so far in the chat, we've got G. Good evening, G. He says, evening, Chief. He says, just going to listen in tonight as I'm still in the garage slash kill room. So if you follow G on Instagram, he's a good one to follow. He is currently painting his bay window bus in his garage after he's doing a load of, after he's done a load of welding work on the roof. So worth going to see him on Instagram. G, remind us again what you are on Instagram or where your stories and lives are and then people can go and check you out and the work on your bay. Uh, we've got Michael Hutchison on the, on the chat as well. He says, evening, hope next week goes well. Thank you very much. Uh, and Andrew Smith, he's online as well. He says, evening, buddy. So yes, right, whilst I'm here, let's take you for a quick walk around what we've done. So I went to go and see a friend of mine, Dave, down in Hailing Island, and he sold me a set of these tires. Now these are Hankook Dynapro ATMs, and they are looking quite handsome on there. And if you can see in there, I don't know if you'll be able to see, 
Maybe, maybe not. Yes, you can just about see. Where are we? No, you can't see it, but you can just about see that there is a, a spacer in there. Um, and then we've got a spacer on the front, but he is looking quite handsome, lifted right up there. So I look forward to test driving him. So whilst we did that, we did, um, so whilst he was up in the air, I replaced the trailing arms as well. That was a big job. Let me just clip you in one second. There you are, you are clipped in. You're safe, hopefully. Um, so on Friday night, I had a friend of mine, Dan, come over and he helped me replace the trailing arms, complete trailing arms at the back because my last ones were absolutely cooked. Can't believe I actually drove on them. Um, and what else did we do? So the bushes on the trailing arms were already installed. We put some new solid brake lines on the trailing arms, did the shocks, did the springs, and in the front, I did the... Um, steering rack and all of the little donuts that join up all the steering, um, all the rubber steering couplers, I changed all of those as well. So hopefully I'll actually get some decent handling out of this guy because it was getting a bit bad. I noticed on the way back from our European trip that um, he was getting a little bit wandery on the autobahn and when we got him up on the lift, I know why, because the actual ball joint at the end of the steering rack, the tie rod ball joint, not at the wheel end, but at the rack end, that was completely cooked. So I just went, sod it, let's replace the whole thing. And yeah, so we've done that. I used the old Powerflex bushes out of the old rack, put them in a new rack, because that's an upgrade I did probably 10, 11 years ago, and the Powerflex bushes are still awesome. So I did that. So steering rack, what else did we do on the front? Loads, I did a throttle cable, that was really cool. So actually now I've got some feel to the pedal. Uh, put a new fuel line in as well, one of the clear ones. So you can see if there's any air getting in the fuel line. So yeah, really, really good. So who else have we got? We've got Andrew Smith. He says, evening, buddy. Um, Michael Hutchinson also, Hutchison also says, evening, hope next week goes well. Thank you very much. Justin Tipler says, evening, Lee. Ian Sherman says, evening, just home from a run out to Bidford or Bidford on Avon. That sounds lovely. Andrew Smith says, the T4 is getting raised up over the next few days. T5 rear being some built... Blah, blah. T5 rear springs and Bilstein shocks, hopefully tomorrow. Awesome. Any tips, says Andrew, on the T4 raising? So you've pretty much, well, it's not the worst job in the world, is it? Because on the front, you just need to wind the torsion bar out or in, in. You need to wind it in. So make sure you've got a socket big enough and long enough. But if you're winding, hang on. Trying to think. Do you wind it in or out to go up? I can't quite remember. It's been a long time since I did our last T4. We slammed that. What did we do? Can't remember if it was in or out. Anyway, make sure you've got the right socket and the tool for that. Um, spray everything down maybe tonight so things come undone easy. Um, yeah, make sure it's safe and have a buddy with you as well. So you can, uh, you know, you can bounce ideas off each other and it's always good to have someone help bit of uh, wrenching in a garage is always good too. So normally we also say who's drinking tonight or who's got a drink with you. I've just got a glass of Coke. Normally it's a cup of tea or maybe if I'm feeling a bit, you know, if it's a Sunday night, we'll have a beer. So what are you drinking? There's 11 of you in the chat right now. Always good to see you, obviously. Who are you? Where are you from? Uh, what van do you have? What have you been doing to it this week? And have you been away or are you going away? And also, we also discuss what we're drinking as well. So Today, Coke, so cheers. So yeah, I've actually got a Scarface Lowriders t-shirt on tonight. Last week I had the High Up Transporters um, t-shirt on. Maybe I should have that on tonight, bearing in mind we've now got the High Boy. So who fancies watching me or watching me attempt to fit a mirror live on, uh, on YouTube then, on YouTube Live? I hope it goes well. Like I say, we've got the Rad Kit from Jed at Campervan Culture. Now, I believe these are genuines. Yes, they are, look. I don't know if you can see it, if it's gonna focus in. Where are we? They're actually genuine VW mirrors. So, except no imitations, genuine VW truck mirrors. And even the rubbers that hold them in, or the, like the gaskets between these and the bodywork, VW part number as well. So very happy with that. So what we've got to do, in fact, let's just roll straight into it. Let me bring you round here. Let's do this. So let's hopefully 
this will work. Again, first time I've done this, so please be patient. Let's see how we're going with it. What you should have is one of those body cams on, really, isn't it? Do it live like that. So basically, the stock mirrors that Type 25s come with are okay. They work, um, but generally, they're a bit tat. And also, if your mirrors are knackered, you get over 65, not over 65, what am I saying? Over 45, they just fold in like that. There's nothing locking them in. They just wander around. So let's get those replaced. Before that, we've got a comment there. Stu MCP says, got some hidden panel clips for my T25 black, but they're too small for the holes and don't hold the panels in. Any ideas? Um, if you've gone for the ply kit and the T25 clips, um, I would say better to go with the hidden clips that we sell, which are the, they're almost like, uh, they look like Christmas trees. So one stalk and they've got lots of little fins all the way down. Um, I actually find that on a Type 25, using those invisible clips works really, really well. And we've done that on the van just behind me, actually. Can I spin this around? Yes, there we go. So on the van just there, we use those clips on that one, on the door cards, and it worked really, really well. So, hey, this technology stuff works, doesn't it? Right, let's get you a bit straighter there. Can I go a bit further that way? Okay, yeah, we're trying. Right, so who's into this? What do you reckon? Should we get these done? I'm gonna. So, right. First tool I need is one of these Torx keys. Um, mainly this one because it's got this small hole in the end. So this is a T30 by 150. And the screws, if you can see here, they're actually the security ones. I remember a long time ago when I ordered, no, what did I order? I can't remember, I might have got them from um, Brickworks, can't remember. I believe it was a big thing, or it might have even been a Volks zone thing, if, uh, if anybody can remember that back in the day. Everybody's like, you've got to get security screws for your van. And in reality, they're not security screws. They're a bit more awkward. But who's going to nick a set of these mirrors anyway? Right, so hopefully that's going to come undone. Oh, Stu MCP says, Oh, that's what they were? Yes, yeah, the invisible clips. Motivate's on, he says, hello, hello. Our workshop sessions, yes, indeed. So we're gonna try and do this live today, if you're with us. And um, I'm fitting some truck mirrors to bully. Now I've had these truck mirrors in my possession for about two years. Because two years ago I wanted to fit these. But I didn't really think truck mirrors were justified I know this is painful to watch, by the way. It's the only tool I have that has that fitting in. You know, it's got like the little nipple in the end. Um, I didn't really think truck mirrors were justified on a van that wasn't raised. Don't know why, just the way I thought about it. So, this is painfully slow, isn't it? Here we go, they are coming out slowly. The next bit will be quicker, there we go. Right, one mirror off, and the little rubber gasket's gone walkies as well. So yeah, old standard mirrors are junk. Hi, look. Okay, if you ever wondered, that's what I can see. So when I'm live with you, I can see all your comments like this. You see that? So I can't see really what you're seeing. Look, Inception. Hello. That wasn't even a standard mirror, that was a that wasn't a Volkswagen mirror. So before I go any further, I'm going to get a cleaning implement. And I shall just clean up that area before I put a new gasket on it. There we go, right. See the difference in paint colours there. There we go, right. Man, he's dirty already. Okay, right, so that is clean and ready to go. Oh. What I'm gonna do is just mock up the mirrors to begin with. 
Have I got the right one? No. They are sided, which is handy. So if I put that on there, and this is all it will be to begin with, just going to mop these up. I've been waiting to do this for ages. Linton Scott. Litton. Sorry, my bad. Litton Scott says, is there a bolt you can tighten to make the original mirror steady in the wind? Yes, there is. Bear with us one second and I'll show you. Right, so that is basically there. Adjust this one at the top. And there we go. Before I make any adjustments, I'll tighten that one up at the bottom and then I'll get some masking tape on here, uh, put the gasket in there and then mark up where they need to go. So, listen, in the bottom of your mirror, so this is your bog standard mirror, there is a 10 millimeter nut there, just there, you see it? And it's holding down this spring and that spring is what holds this ball joint into the base. So if you tighten that spring up, it will increase the tension of that movement. Now, if your mirrors are knackered, they're knackered, but you can try helping it out. So although this one's corroded and covered in tat, you will be able to tighten that up with a 10 mil socket or 10 mil spanner or whatever it is you have, and that'll increase the tension on that spring, and then hopefully it should tighten up the mirror just fine. Right, so. I'm sure I had another socket that was way more suitable for these bottom bolts that, that at least make me do it a bit quicker than this. So what I'm going to do for the purpose of this exercise, no, that's fine, I'll stay like that. Oh God, they're good. So, so whilst we're here and watching, there's 12 of you in the chat. We've been live 17 minutes. What have you guys been up to? It's always good to hear. Always good to see. We've been sharing lots of stories about you guys who have been using the videos and things to build your vans, which is rad. I always love seeing those videos. Do you know what? I got rid of a load of the bits that helped me do this sort of job not so long ago. Now I really need them. I'm going to do one final check. Bear with us. Play and bass music. That's irritating. Right. What's annoying is I've got to do this every time. Cool. So yes, if you've just tuned in, normally Justin has the longer end on that tool, not got the hole in as well. No, sadly. Otherwise, I would be doing that. Where's the focus on this? Come on. See, so that's the end of that one. That's the end of that one. It's annoying, isn't it? But that is in position. That is tightened down to a point I want. And there we go. I'm gonna get the gasket for that part up there. The gaskets are sided as well. So that's the little gasket right there. See, it's got the shape on it. Now, what that should do is fit in there and fit in there. Amazing. You buy the right gear, stuff fits. So, I'm gonna get my masking tape. John, I don't need masking tape. Not today, because I'm gonna drill it anyway. I'm gonna make a mess.
So I'm happy with that just there. I'm hoping you can see this. Bear with this one second. Let's get you a bit closer. There we go. So I'm going to mark directly on the paintwork. Once I'm happy with the fit, that's tight down there. That's tight up there. Using a Sharpie. A dry Sharpie by the looks of it. Maybe I should have used that tape. And I'm going to need a small drill bit on that one, just to mark it. So, there's a couple of options you can use here. You could just tech screw it straight in, but that's not really my scene. I don't really like to use tech screws. So that is that, that is that, that is that, I'm happy. I'm just gonna mark a hole with this one. Maybe if I get my drill bit centered. You can tell this is live, eh? Here we go. Do that up again. That's where it wants to sit naturally. Other holes match up. And that's the other hole marked. So if I put that out of the way, there you go. Can't really see it. Then the other way. Nope. Right, I'm gonna remove those, that bottom bracket again. That'll give me full access into uh, the top of the mirror. I can make my holes. So yes, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, Tech screws, like I said, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to riv nut this, which is going to be good fun. James is in the chat. He says, Hi Lee, the last couple of weeks I've managed to fix the heater cable and change the clutch and flywheel on my T5. Nice work, man. Nice work. I know the heater cables, is that what you said? Yeah, heater cables, they're not a brilliant job to do. But in the older ones, they can get weak and break. Um, Stu MCP says, Just back from a week in Wales near. Oh, I'm going to ruin the pronunciation. In English, that says bedgillet. But I'm sure there's a phonetic way to say that properly. Um, so still need to put the interior of the T25 back in after sound deadening, insulation and carpeting. All done based on your videos. Thanks. You are more than welcome, Stu. Oh, my gosh. Right, next time I do this, I'm using the other Allen bolts. Not Allen bolts, the other tapered screws. I can whiz them straight in and out so we don't have to suffer this. So, anybody else been up to anything fancy this week? How's work been? I kind of like to know what you guys have been up to. It's been fun. So, now we've got our holes marked. We have one, two, and three. I'm going to go ahead and drill them and then I will enlarge them to accept riv nuts. One. Come on. Sweet. So that is, so there's the holes that are going up in there or the bolts that are going in there um, are an M6, or the ones that I've chosen to go in there are an M6. So I've got an M6 rivnut. I was wondering actually whether that one's going to be a pain to put an M6 rivnut in.
this one. Boom, there we go. I'm trying to think now what I'm going to use for that bottom one because that is going to be too small a hole. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a, um, I'm going to put a rivet in there. That's a four mil hole. I'm going to put a four mil rivet in that one. But first of all, I'm going to tidy up those drill holes. Counter sunk bit, tidy up the edges. Give her a bit of a clean up. What I'm going to use, I could sit there and paint the bolts and paint the holes. Not going to be painting the holes. Oh, sorry. Warren's in. Hello, Warren. He says, no fancy, but Frank might finally be alive. Awesome. Hey team, three, 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 nothing fancy, but Frank might finally be alive after two weeks of electronic gremlins. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. So 18 of you in, right. <clears throat> so to apply the riv nuts, I've got this riv nut gun. Now it might be one that you may not have seen before, but there's different types. There's riv nut guns that you have that you may see that like compress, ones that look like, I don't know, all sorts of things, almost look like rivets. The reason I went for a small um, cranked one like this is because when we're working on camper vans, underneath camper vans, there's not really a lot of space to work on, so I've got this one. So, let's do that. I'm actually gonna be coating the insides of these bolts, not with paint today, because I want to kind of waterproof them and seal them at the same time. So I don't want any water getting in there. So I am using, what's it called, Tiger Seal. Polyurethane bond. And that not only keeps the metal work free from rust once you give it a good coating, but it'll also seal that rib nut into that hole too. I'm just going to put it on the spot where I plan to put the rivet as well. I'll put a nice long M4, not M4, four millimeter rivet in that. There you go, right. Riv nut in the hole. When I figure out how to use this, there we go. There we go. That's gonna. Did I just cover that all up whilst I was doing it? I tell you what. Next one I'll do. I'll put you in a better spot. There you go. Let's put you in for that one. Reset the gun. So that threaded part is now stuck all the way out. 
Throw it on my roof nut. Oh, we've got some more comments. Ross says, oh, hang on, we've got some more comments. So, my apologies, people. Taxi driver says, hello, Lee, just got back from a fabulous day out with my little old mum. We went to Castle Coombe Steam and Vintage Rally. It was great to see so many old cars from yesterday. That sounds like a wonderful way to spend your Sunday, my man. Ross says, don't know, quite know if it's my signal or yours, but quite blurry. Okay, well, if there's anybody else out there that thinks it's quite blurry, let me know. There's not a lot I can do about it, to be honest. Uh, Plush Time TV says, hi, McKee Sport. My name is Ethan Lee, and I searched up something, and it says your name is James to Blue. Don't know. Oh, hi, McKee Sport. Sorry, McKee Sport. Is McKee Sport in the chat? Don't know. Warren says, where did you get that Rivnut gun? That's just what I need. That was from my local, if you watch, follow us on social media, we have an Aladdin's cave of, um, it's a nut bolt fixings and fastening shop. It's the best thing I've ever seen. And I asked them for a Rivnut gun that is better or works in a smaller space and that's what they came up with. I've got the box in my toolbox. I will let you know what it is. So, that one in there. There we go. It's perfect for small spaces. means you don't have to go tunk and break your riv nut. You can actually gauge when it's getting to the end of the metal, or you can gauge if you fluffed it up as well, I guess. So that's tight there. Clip that ratchet round. I do like a half turn or a whole turn and then wind it out. There you go. It's gonna focus. Two lovely riv nutted holes for my new mirrors. Win. Right, I'm gonna go and get my, I'm gonna go and get a decent, what am I trying to say? Rivet as well, and my rivet gun. So one second. Excuse the noise, I'm gonna turn on the compressor. When I turn the plug on. Won't be long. Should have really done that before, haven't I? Oh, hang on. Right, so Tony's, Tony's in and he says, uh, afternoon, I've got one of those. Um, it's the Masterfix MFX 612, does M6 to M12. There we go.
Right, so that'll do. Less of that noisiness. So I think what I'm actually going to be doing... <laughs> Jesus, I was listening to this to drown out my compressor. Yeah, and then I put a compressor on. Right, so this hole in the back there, I made it four, but the only long rivets I can find are my M5s. M5s, five mil. So, and you need a long one because the gasket, <coughs> the gasket is quite long. So I'm gonna go for a long five mil rivet. There you go, it's gone to five. I'll re the inside of that screw with a bit of slot. Yes, sir. There you go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Get some crap on my hands. Cool, right, long rivet and rivet gun. Long rivet and rivet gun. Good, got that, got that, got that. Cool. Right then. We are gonna loosely put this on again. Hopefully without touching the fresh slop that I've put on. There we go, we've got any more comments going on? Uh, Warren says, that's good G, you can come here and listen to Lee's log. Right, stay. So I don't know about you in the chat who's coming to Campus and Coffee, but I am buzzing for Campus and Coffee right now. There is a lot of you lot coming actually, which should be really good. And if you're staying over the night, that'll be even more fun because we can have a bit of social time together. Have a couple of drinks around the campfire. Well, not the campfire, we can't have fires there. Boo. We can't have fires there. Right, so watch me painfully do these up for a second. Because I've only got one tool that fits this screw. I'm loosely going in anyway. So I'm getting the hang of it now. Cool, that's not tight. Need my gasket. Gasket. Where's it gone? Where's my gasket gone? Uh oh. <clears throat> I've got the right one. Don't know. No, I've got the left one. Don't have the right one. That's a good look, isn't it? Panicking now. I'm trying to do this on camera and look professional. Alexa, play elevator music. She's not on the people. Oh, where have I put that bit? Anybody else do that in a workshop? You go and start a job, and then all of a sudden, you're like, where the hell did I just put that? And because I'm running around trying to find tools, I look really professional. One second. Right, so for Warren, that's how that kit comes. You know, you've got all the different collars and bits and pieces to go in that uh, rib nut gun kit. Which is very cool. Right, so I've got the rubber. I can 
can go in there and put my new bolts there. And I'm going to line my first one up. Come on, you. There you go. First one down. Nice countersunk. Sorry, I'm not even pointing you in the right way. There you go. Right. I found some decent countersunks, but they were the wrong length. So I trimmed them down. And they are a Phillips head, actually. Which is all right, we can live with that. Cool, right. The other fancy toy we have is the uh, is the rivet gun. Now you need to go all the way in there. Come back out. There you go. Ready? You're not gripping. It's probably a rivet still in there. No. Stay. Here we go. Ding. Spit out the old one. Tighten them up. Right. Tighten these ones up down here. Let's put you back a bit. Hey. Right. Where are we? Uh, where are we? Matt says, can you buy Camps and Coffee tickets on the gate or do you have to pre-book online for a van? Also, are the tickets per person or per vehicle? You can buy tickets online beforehand. You can buy tickets on the gate and they are per vehicle. I know, absolute bargain. So just to let you know, or just to remind you, the event is actually on the 4th of June, which is the Sunday. However, you can come down on Saturday, the 3rd of June, buy overnight a ticket and you can camp over with the rest of us. It'd be really good fun. Skeggy Cruiser says, I've got a Mazda Bongo myself, but I do like a good looking VW. My question is, what underseal would you recommend? Also, thanks for you. Thanks for... <laughs> also, thanks for bringing my Alexa to life when you spoke to yours, lol. Yeah, do you know what? I've done that before. Um, underseal, there's a few things. Um, there's wax oil. Um, 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 I've seen people and I have used uh, Raptor as well. That's pretty good. Um, and there's a new one uh, that people are doing lots of, and I can't remember the name of it. What's the new underseal that everybody's using? I think Tony, you were chatting to me about it, either Tony or um, Tony or Warren. It's all over social media at the moment, can't remember. Anyway, right, let's get back to this. Uh, but yes, undersealing is a good idea. When it comes to doing more work on the underneath of this guy, we will be using a decent under seal two, so that'd be good fun. But yes, I've used uh, wax oil to very good effect. In fact, I did a video on wax oiling on Joe Sugg's split, I believe. So we have done an instructional, if I remember right. If not, it might have just been some B-roll of it, I can't remember. Now this is the problem with doing this live. I can't cut out all the boring stuff of me doing up nuts and tightening stuff and just checking things fit. So you're gonna have to live with it, I'm afraid. And I'm definitely gonna find my socket set with the ones that fit these.
because they are tedious when doing them like this, quarter turn at a time. There you go. Mate, check them out. You can fold them away. You can fold them flat. And they stay where they should do. Should we put the mirror on? I'm going to need a 10 mil socket. One second. So in the kit, it comes with a mirror. Now I believe you can put it either way. You can put it like inboard, like that. What do we reckon? No, sorry, my bad. Inboard like that. Or you could have it completely outboard, like that. I think I'm going to go outboard like that. Really obnoxious. I can always change them over, can I? Right, and they come with this bolt with a black washer and also that little nut cover as well. So, let's bring you in. Just drop the washer. <clears throat> Do you know what? I'm not a big fan of people coming into the workshop and watching us work. Plus we don't have the insurance for it. Because you always feel a bit unnerved when people are watching you work, so I don't know why I'm doing this really. But I thought it'd be fun. Right, there we go then. go. I like that. I'm not going to put that cap on yet just in case I want to adjust it but what do you reckon? Let's have a look. Oh yeah. So that versus that. I know what I'd rather look at. Should we have a quick look inside? Let me flip you around. Oh, van's in the wrong place. Oh, yeah. Mate, you see for miles. Oh, that tiny little piddly one there. Oh, that one. Oh, that tiny little bit there. Or that one. I'm well happy with that. That's cool, man. Really cool. Right. So, as per the instructions or the Haynes manual, do the same, but for the other side. I am so happy with those. What are your thoughts, people? I've always, always, always wanted a set of these. And now it's lifted. And it's lower than it should be at the moment because I haven't got any shocks in it. Now it's lifted. It definitely warrants that big mirror. So yeah, cool. Right then. I think we're going to finish up. We've got 10 more minutes. We've got 10 more minutes. <clears throat> there we go. Let's have a look at some of the comments. Uh, Lanagard is the one thing you're trying to recall, Lee. Yes, Lanagard. Lanagard, Lanagard. Um, why don't you change the bottom screws for Philips ones as well? I will. That's what I have at the time. So I will change them. So thank you very much, James. Um, however, they're on now they're on. So it might make it a little harder for the next guy to try and steal it if he wants to. 
Taxi driver, aka Mad Mossy, says, I'm so looking forward. Two weeks' time for Campus and Coffee. It will be great to see everyone. I hope to be there on Saturday afternoon. Wonderful. We look forward to seeing you. Tony says, yeah, Lanagard, they got a contract for a shop ship recently. Must be something in it. I'm going to do mine before summer is out. Yeah, absolutely. G says, can't wait for Campus and Coffee. Lot, not long to go now. Um, Tony says, outboard for towing. Yeah, they're pretty good, right? Um... Michael Hutchinson says, looks loads better. I've just got a T5. Need to follow your videos to make it great. Thanks for all the good videos. You are more than welcome. You are more than welcome. Right, so before I just spend the last 10 minutes just having a chat with you and going through the last bits and pieces, um, little request from me. If you've enjoyed being here this evening, what are we on now? We are 10 to 7. Please do me a favour and just hit the thumbs up, wherever the thumbs up is on the screen. If you wouldn't mind hitting the little thumbs up, it does absolutely wonders for my video. There are 20 of you watching. If you haven't done a thumbs up yet, please do if you, obviously, if if I deserve it. Um, yeah, it really, really helps out as a channel. I like doing these sorts of things because um, in the interim, when we don't have lives going on, I have videos filmed. I have videos filmed. Ali is out in the States which means I haven't been able to put them up live or get the final edit completed, but it doesn't matter because we will all have the videos up very soon. Um, we're also going to film when we're going down to Nuki next weekend, so that'll be good fun. I'm going to be doing some filming. My wife's going to be doing some filming. If you follow us um, at Coombe Valley Campers or at Coombe underscore Valley underscore Campers on Instagram, you can see our stories there as well. Um, so it should be really, really good fun. But yes, we hope to film as much as we can. So... Good stuff. Um, one thing, if we're not, we don't have any questions, I was just going to show you what I've been up to today. Um, obviously, if you've seen the stories, my wife has done a sterling job of cleaning the interior of Bully, ready to go away next weekend. Um, so all looking clean and fresh. And the one thing I did um, was clean the cab carpets. Now, did you? If you haven't seen this trick yet, get on it. On um, I saw it on social media, whether it was TikTok or Instagram, using a DA sander or a DA polishing mop to agitate the uh, dust in your carpet and then suck it up. Have a look at the stories uh, or on my reels. I've done a reel already. So this is what I was up to today. Um, I've been sealing all of the seams with tape. Now, from here, it doesn't look like I've done anything, which is kind of what I'm after. If you look up close, I've used this tent repair tape on the seams. I've still got the bottom one to do here. I ran out of time before the live. But I use this seam tape all over the van. And if you have a look, I've done it on here too. I've gone even round this edge here. So it actually comes to about here. Can you see it? You can just see it glinting in there. There you go. So I've done it there. Um, and I've gone all the way round, so that should hopefully waterproof that seam. And the reason is, is it's basically a sticky plaster for this year. Um, I can't afford a new canvas, plus I want a custom one. I want some more vents, I want windows. I might even see if I can do like a, an opening canvas like you see on T5s, T6s. So I don't want to just go for a standard canvas. I want to, I want to really make it something special um, because... This van's for life, not just for seasons. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Could be fun. Um, right. G says, well, hey, have a great time at RTTS. Thank you very much. Taxi driver says, thumbs up from me. Thank you very much. Uh, Tony says, I'm looking at reproofing the tent box fabric soon. Are you spraying the outside of the pop-top fabric or just redoing the seams? I'm redoing all the seams first. I'm going to give them a couple of days to sort of settle, and then I will be reproofing it. I think I showed everybody last week. What is it called? One second. I'm going to find the jar. Where is it? Fab seal. Now, it's not really canvas. That's kind of like... Do you remember the old... I don't know where they still use them. Remember you used to deliver papers? You had that big plastic bag, the kind of material that you had on your paper bag. That's kind of what that's made out of. However, I did throw a ton of that on it. And now it's just kind of a sponge on, sponge off type deal. Um, the trouble is it is 40 years old and it had, you know, any 40 year old canvas is gonna be a pain to deal with. So, um, 
it has little pin pricks, little holes. The reason I'm doing all the seams is um, where the stitching is, the stitching's just old, dry rotted, and it's sort of fallen through its old holes. So there's loads of little pinholes everywhere. And that's when we had torrential downpours for two days in Austria last year, the whole thing leaked so bad. And I think I showed you this last week as well. It leaked so bad. I had to put a pressure relief valve in it. See that? I had to actually slice the canvas uh, to let the huge puddle of water out because it leaked inside that bad. It was ridiculous. But hey-ho. Right. Um, where are we? Uh, Warren says, love this thing, dude. Thank you very much, my man. This is my baby. Tony says, I've seen other tools used to agitate the dust. Those weird massage guns. Yeah, I wasn't looking for that video, honest. I bet you were, dirty boy. Um, yeah, in fact, one of the guys here says he's just got one of those massage guns. It was mega money, but he says it's already sorted him right out. Um, so yes, agitating the dust. But with that DA sander I had, it's obviously got the vacuum attachment in the back. So whilst I was agitating, it was sucking it all up at the same time. And I am in all honesty quite ashamed at how much dirt was in that carpet. I still don't know whether I'm going to actually vax it yet, bearing in mind I'm going away next weekend. So yeah, who knows? Who knows? Um, look, we've got three and a half minutes left-ish. Has anybody got any burning questions? Anything they want to say? Anything they want to ask? Um, okay, just quickly, let's hit the comments. What have you been drinking this evening? I've just got Coke. What have you all been drinking this evening? Hit the comments now. You've got three minutes. Tea, coffee, beer. What have you got? I think what I'm going to do tonight, I'm not going to fit the other mirror tonight, mainly because I've got a home to get to. And uh, I believe there's a roast, which will be lovely. Um, uh, G says, Alpine storms are something else. Yes, it was horrendous. The storm was that bad in Austria. Uh, I lost my awning too. G says, lost a good awning to one of those. Gone but not forgotten. Yeah, we, um, we totally canned our awning. We had a proper nice driveway awning. It was a few years old. But the thing got so sodden and so broken in the storm. It was just rain. It wasn't like wind or anything. It was just heavy rain all night. And uh, in the morning, I stuffed that thing back into the bag as much as I could and then just left it in the skip on the way out of, uh, of the way out of the campsite, which is ridiculous. Uh, G says, about to go get the cheese and wine out once I've packed up. Mate, that sounds awesome. Uh, Tony says, overdosed on coffee already, just water. Um, Jonathan Hodgkiss says, do you shave your head? Yes, I do. I have to. Look, I've got the old male pattern baldness going on heavy. I am 39 right now. I started losing my hair at 21, so <clears throat> to nature. Thanks for that. Um, I, I don't know where I got it from because all my grandparents had good hair. My dad had good hair. So yes, I have to shave my head to stop looking me, stop making me look like I don't know, some sort of monk, I guess. Um, and with the grey, just makes me look homeless. Um, Andrew Smith says, I'm cracking open the port. Yeah, good stuff, that sounds good. Uh, taxi driver says, what is the black ceiling edging around the rooftop? I need some for my van. That stuff is a U-channel rubber seal. Um, this one's specific for a pop top. I used an example of the old um, rubber seal that came off it and then bought it all from a company called Seals Plus Direct. Have a look for Seals Plus Direct on Google. They have probably got any rubber seal that you need. So um, if you have an existing one, um, yeah, if you have an existing um, U-shaped rubber or seal like the one that goes on the edge of this cut it so you can see the profile of it compare that to what you see on seals plus direct and then they should be able to sort you out now that is probably about 10 meters worth of rubber here so it wasn't cheap but a brand new one was what was needed because again the roof's 40 years old um mum, 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 tony says i shed a tear when you dumped the awning yeah that was that was a sad day um but this year we are borrowing my friend's air up awning um but I also found a really cheap Coleman event shelter tent where we pick up our bottles of gas. They are Coleman dealers, effectively. And they had these really good 
event shelter tents, three by threes, and it was it was like 125 quid. And anywhere else, whilst I was in the shop, I was sort of Googling the same thing, and anywhere else I could see them online was 180 quid. So yes, that we should be using an event shelter thing. Anyway, that is an hour, people. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope I didn't embarrass myself too much by trying to do that live. Um, do as I say, not as I do, I guess, when it comes to doing things like that. Uh, it's why I have somebody film me and edit some things sometimes. But it's a bit of fun. I'm here to share what I do. If you like this sort of format, let me know. If you want to see me do more things live, be that at the workshop or wherever it may be, let me know and I will be I will quite happily do some more things live as we're going. I've really enjoyed chatting to you all this evening. Um, like I say, if you're still here and you've liked watching, if you've liked listening in the case of G, he's using me as a podcast, I guess, for the last hour, uh, please be sure to give us a little thumbs up. Um, it's been great fun having you. So, oh, sorry, S King, he's had a recorder leg this evening. Nice job. Right, I think I'm going to tidy up here because I've got a whole mess of workshop to sort out now. And I bid you good night. Have a great week, everybody. Um, if I do a live Sunday, it will be from a campsite somewhere in Nuki, I think. So who's up for that? That'd be good fun, wouldn't it? Right. Good evening, everybody. Have a great week and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.